Morning guys. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to start a prayer rule. So we're going to go over some elements of a good morning and evening prayer rule and we'll talk about some of those supplements to prayer that make it special and how we are seeking after the end goal of prayer to be united to God. So of course many of you already pray with your families. We talked about this in youth group a couple of Sundays ago. I'm not asking you to replace that but to start to try small acts of devotion on your own which make the faith personal and special for you. Personal prayer is the most important thing for someone to develop in their life. So when you're beginning a life of prayer, the most important thing to do is to have a spiritual director who can guide you and suggest a prayer rule. This isn't to limit you, but to help you and guide you. This is why I've had you contact Father Herman by emailing him to ask for advice about how to begin. Having a spiritual father helps us to stay humble. He tells us when we're trying to do too much or to add a little to challenge ourselves. My role in this video as a youth leader is to help you start to pray and give examples of things you could possibly do to make your prayers meaningful. So I'll just briefly go over some of the things that I do to make it special, and then I'll go over a typical structure of a morning and evening prayers and give some final thoughts. So the first thing I want to talk today about is those little things that we covered briefly last time in the Prayer Corner episode. Uh, how to light a candle and incense, kissing icons, and setting out fresh flowers. Maybe you set out an object that reminds you of a friend or family member. Um, so I'll give you a brief tour of our icon corner, how we have it set up. So here we have our incense and our flowers set out. We've got some special icons to married saints, uh, and we've even got some uh, holy oil and relics that we venerate, um, St. John oil, uh, St. John Maximovich, we like to put on each other's foreheads in the morning. Um, and this is our eternity candle. It's a candle that uh, is always burning um, night and day, and it reminds us to pray because it's ceaselessly burning. We ceaselessly pray, and uh, you can see it's running low, so we'll just top it off with some olive oil. So those are some of examples of how you can add to your prayer corner and I'm going to just briefly go over some uh, ways that I approach it an icon corner reverently. So the first thing that you do is you approach it just like in church. Um, you um, make a couple of prostrations, you do two, then kiss the icon and then bow to the floor. Those That's called a metania when you touch the floor so you Take the sign of the cross, and then you touch the floor. And then again, and kiss the icon, then do it one more time. So that's one way that you can make a prostration. The other way is just by bowing all the way to the floor. Uh, we do that especially in Lent, like this. So you can do that, do that during your Lent, or you can do it when you're just feeling especially reverent. Um, the other thing I like to do is um, prostrate just before Christ for a longer period of time, sometimes especially before I start my prayer rule. And um, this is a nice thing to do. You, you at times can really feel God's presence around you and um, kind of uh, just sitting in his presence is, is really nice. and. Um, his voice comes to us most often in these times that we're silent. So if you memorize scriptures, often these times um, of silence will have God's voice will come to us, and um, or we'll think of a scripture like "Be still and know that I am God," or "May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause His face to shine down upon you." So you can almost kind of feel Him smiling at you. Um, so there's are a couple of examples of how to prostrate. Um, when you approach the icons in these kind of reverent ways, God's pre presence seems so near. And when we offer him these acts of reverence, we show him that we want to be in his presence, that we like to be in his presence, and he honors that. So you can often feel his presence tangibly in your heart. In fact, if you put your hand on your heart right now, you can feel him, how close he is to, to you. That's because his Holy Spirit lives inside of us. We're a temple made without hands. I like to sit in silence or pray the Jesus prayer before I begin my prayer rule and prepare my heart before I begin. So 
With further, without further ado, uh, let's go over the structure of prayer um, in a typical morning and evening prayer. So uh, the Trisagion, as we've learned, starts with O Heavenly King, and then Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal three times, um, All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Our Father, come let us worship God our King, and that is called the Trisagion prayer. So the O Heavenly King is prayed to the Holy Spirit, the um, All Holy Trinity, Trinity to the Trinity, our Father to the Father, come let us worship before God our King, come let us worship Christ our King and our God to Christ. And so we have the Trinity uh, throughout that um, that we invoke. And um, so that's a way that the church helps us to prepare for any sort of prayer. Um, so after the Trisagion is when you can start to kind of customize um, prayer a bit. So um, one thing I might suggest is doing one of those paragraphs that we handed out to you guys. Um, just uh, like, grant us, O God, to greet the coming day in peace. Um, or grant us so to um, keep this night without sin. Uh, prayers like that, um, that are just one paragraph long and kind of short. So those you can kind of interchange all the time or keep one consistent that you like. Um, after one of those prayers or several, um, can offer hymns to um, different saints. Those are called tropars. So you can offer it to the saint of the day or to your patron saint uh, for a feast that we've just celebrated or about to celebrate. Um, and in church, we're, we always um, sing the hymns to saints just before um, reading the scriptures. So um, that's kind of where you place that within your prayer time. It, um, we like to kind of emulate in our own personal prayer time, what we do in the church, and also in our families, because our houses are little churches, so to speak. Um, we try to kind of emulate what we do in church outside of um, church, also in our homes, in our personal lives, and, you know, wherever we are at school, um, at work. And um, so anyway, so um, we try to emulate the church. And um, when we are done kind of singing some of those hymns to saints. We uh, read scripture, the gospel and epistle. Um, and then one way that you can really customize um, your prayer is by offering special hymns. They're not necessarily related to the cycle of the daily cycle or monthly cycle, seasonal cycles, uh, but like to the Theotokos. So for example, Anastasia and I really love these hymns. Um, and we offer it at the end. Um, we have songs that we sing together in special moments. Um, like when we got um, engaged uh, and when we first started dating, we sang uh, this song. It is truly me to bless you, O Theotokos. Um, and usually a little better when we're together. Um, so we we sing that often, and every time we sing it, you know, it calls to mind uh, those special moments um, that we sing it together. So when you offer it in special moments and you remember to pray it during your personal prayer, it just kind of reminds you of those special moments and perpetuates our thanksgiving to God. And um, so we sing these hymns every chance we get uh, before we go to bed, when we wake up, around meals. Um, so I'll put a link to um, some of our favorite recordings of hymns. Um, but there are some prayers we only know by heart. Um, so maybe we'll s record a special episode about hymns one of these days. Um, after singing a hymn at the very end of our prayer rule, we might, uh, during Lent, say the prayer of St. Ephraim. Uh, we always pray that at the very end and we bow between each line. Um, remember, you don't have to do all of these prayers. In fact, I recommend maybe you don't. If you're just starting off in prayer, it might be too much. But uh, even if you just try to pray one paragraph from our list, it's a really good start. When you do try try to pray, um, just do what you do consistently under the guidance of a priest and try to do it in a heartfelt way. So the last thing I'll mention about prayer, sorry if I've gone too long, uh, after we've prayed at our icon corner, don't forget that God asks us to pray without ceasing. So it's good to remember him throughout our whole day because we carry him with us. So offer a prayer of thanksgiving in your own words and talk to him every moment you can throughout the day. 
maybe offer some written prayers at meals or before you go to school or work. If you know about the hours, you can pray those throughout the day, kind of interspersed. Uh, one of my favorite verses about ceaseless prayer is in Deuteronomy 6, when God tells his people to remember that when they sin it in their homes, when they walk on the way, when they rise up, when they lay down, to remember him. Basically, learning to pray is to become united to God through our whole day, our whole life, at every moment possible to give thanks to him, to offer our whole selves to him, our struggles and our joys. In this way, we ourselves become a living prayer, and every act is offered back to him in thanksgiving. So that's all I'll say today. Sorry these episodes are going on longer than I thought, but hey, we like to pray. Um, remember, if you start a prayer world today, I've got some special sweet prizes coming your way. Um, we've got some small icons, big icons, uh, oil lamp, beeswax candle, uh, prayer book, and tin cards. So practice your prayers. Um, have a good quarantine, and uh, this is a good opportunity to go deeper in God. So uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day.